Hey guys, what's going on? Professor here, and today I'm coming at you with another top 10 video. Today we're going to be going over the top 10 best LEGO Star Wars sets from Episode 2. This is Attack of the Clones. For those who don't know, this movie, Attack of the Clones Episode 2, came out in 2002 and is the second movie in the prequel trilogy. Uh, as always, if you guys do enjoy, don't forget to go down there, hit that like button, and if you want to support the channel, please consider subscribing. And I forgot to mention last time, uh, but because there are multiple versions of sets, like, for example, this time there were multiple gunships, uh, even though I would probably put them both on the list, I'm only going to pick the best version, so there's only one gunship on this list, one ATT, things like that. I don't want to just flood the list with a ton of these large sets. I do want to kind of branch out and everything. Also, before I get into this, I realized as I was going through that there are not a lot of Episode 2 sets. There was kind of a wave that was released right around the time the movie was released, 2002-2003, and then since then there's only been like a couple other waves. There was one in 2013, and then there's been some others that have kind of been sprinkled in, but there are not a lot of sets from Episode 2, uh, and I definitely think LEGO should make more of those. But with that all the way, let's jump straight into it at number 10, where I have set number 75085. This is the Hailfire Droid. This retail for $20, came with 163 pieces, and came out in 2015. Comes with three minifigures you see there, the two super bottle droids, and that is the clone lieutenant with the blue markings. Um, overall, this, this uh, Hailfire Droid is alright. I really do prefer the spring-loaded shooters to the uh, what they used to put in there was flick fire flick fire missiles excuse me and I don't think those work as well as the spring loader shooters so I think that's an improvement but the way they did the uh, treads on the side is just a little weird uh, the little um, printer the printed clear pieces those are nice I like how they printed the treads on there but the way they kind of have them surrounded uh, maybe that is more accurate I'm not entirely sure but from my perspective, I just I don't like that as much on the Hellfire Droid. But the minifigures in this are very nice, especially that Clone Trooper. And I really love the uh, Spring Loaded Shooters, and that's why I put this one at number 10. Moving on to number 9, we have set number 7143. This is the Jedi Starfighter from 2002. This one retailed for $20, came with 139 pieces. The one minifigure there being Obi-Wan. Uh, and overall, there's not that much to say about this set. It's very simple. It's Obi-Wan's Jedi Starfighter from Episode 2. I really love the red color that they used. It is very flat, so there's not a lot of height to it, but obviously 2002. So I can't blame them too much for that, but that definitely does knock this down. And also, because it was so flat, they only included the top piece of the astromech droid. You didn't get a full droid, which is also unfortunate. Uh, and overall, the model does just look a little bit clunky by today's standards. But all things considered, um, for 2002, this was a pretty nice set at the time, and that's why I put this one at number 9. Moving on to number 8, we have set number 75016. This is the homing spider droid from 2013. Retailed for $30, came with 295 pieces. This one comes with some nice minifigures as well. You get your regular Clone Trooper, a Dwarf Spider Droid, once again, two Super Battle Droids. And then you also get Stas Ali, which is the only set that that Jedi has ever come in as a LEGO minifigure. Unfortunately, for this particular homing Spider Droid, um, it looks extremely identical to the one um, that I believe they released later on. I don't remember exactly remember the year. Um, but it's basically a carbon copy. The homing spider droid also isn't necessarily something that's super iconic. Um, so overall, while I don't love the homing spider droid overall, it's a decent model that comes with some really nice minifigures, and that's really why I put this one at number 8. Moving on to number 7, we have set number 4481. This one is also called Hellfire Droid. This one came out in 2003, however, and was part of the LEGO Star Wars Technic line. It retailed for $50 with 681 pieces, and while for the most part the Technic sets from Star Wars in the early days are very bad, I actually think the Hailfire Droid executed it relatively well. Uh, the treads, once again, are very nice, the large loops. Uh, I don't actually know if they can rotate or not, as I don't have the set myself. If they can, that's definitely something uh, that adds a little viability to this. Um, but overall, I think LEGO did a very good job of capturing the overall look of the Hailfire Droid in Technic. Um, so yeah, there really isn't that much to say about it. It is, does look kind of old, and I'm sure if I had it in hand, it probably wouldn't look quite as good as some of the pictures. Uh, but overall, very nice set, and that's why I put this one at number 7. Moving on to number 6, 
We have set number 7133. This is the Bounty Hunter Pursuit, excuse me, from 2002. This one retailed for $30, came with 259 pieces. Uh, and there really isn't a ton going on with this set. This is the two uh, speeders from the Coruscant Chase early in Episode 2, where you got Zam Wessel, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Anakin Skywalker as the minifigures. Uh, Zam Wessel is a really nice minifigure included in this set, and I really love the color scheme they used for her speeder uh, with the dark and light and kind of like that dark green and the lime green and then they also have like splashes of the really nice orange color i think it looks really nice overall um uh, the designs of the speeders do look very nice this is a set that i would like to see lego remake somehow maybe just update the speeders maybe make them a little larger add some scenery or something um but overall i really like this set it's a set that i would love to be able to have include some nice minifigures and a really nice design speeders that's why i put this one at number six Moving on to number five, we have set number 75191. This is the Jedi Starfighter with Hyperdrive. Came out in 2017. Retailed for $100, came with 825 pieces. The four minifigures you see there being Obi-Wan, uh, Baby Boba Fett, as I call him. It's Boba Fett from Episode 2. You get Jango Fett, and then you also get the P4, or excuse me, R4 P17, which is the astromech droid included. Uh, this is the second rendition of a Hyperdrive booster ring. This is the first one that was released for an Episode 2 Jedi Starfighter. The previous one was for an Episode 3 Interceptor. Uh, I really love the functionality of it. It works very well. You can put it in. You can uh, hold the actual booster ring by those clear pieces right there and move it around. The ship won't fall out or anything. It's very stable, and then you can easily take it out and just fly the ship around by itself. The reason, honestly, why this one is so low is because the build is very tedious and was probably one of my least favorite builds ever. Building the actual hyper booster ring is not very fun. Uh, if it's something that you can stomach and get through, this is definitely a set that I would recommend to somebody just based on the looks and the functionality of it. It's really nice. But the build itself was a huge pain, uh, and that's really why I put this one at number five. Moving on to number four, we have set number 75015. This is the Corporate Alliance Tank Droid. Retailed for $20, hit with 271 pieces back in 2013. This one comes with three minifigures, being a clone trooper, uh, Jango Fett, and a Geonosian battle droid. This is a different Jango Fett than the previous set. Uh, there have only been three different Jango Fets released. One came out in that Jedi Starfighter Hyperdrive, one came out in this set, and one came out in a set I will show in the future on this list. Um, so that is very nice, a really cool Jango Fett minifigure, and that Corporate Alliance tank droid is just one of my uh, favorite um, droid ships, uh, vehicles, whatever, from the Clone Wars era. Uh, Revenge of the Sith is definitely my favorite prequel movie, and that's really where this is highlighted. It doesn't really show up that much in Episode 2, um, so I really get that kind of nostalgia when really thinking about this back on Kashyyyk and all that. Uh, and then some nice minifigures to boot. I also prefer the uh, dark orange coloring they use to this one, as opposed to uh, the Clone Wars edition of it. It didn't look quite as good. This one is made a little bit larger. Uh, I think the tread functionality works a little bit better, and the color scheme is better with some great minifigs. That's why I put this one at number four. Moving on to number three, we have set number 75019. This is the ATTE. This one retailed for $90, came with 794 pieces, came out back in 2013. Uh, and what really highlights this set is the minifigures, a great selection of minifigures. You get the five shown right there being a Geonosian Battle Droid, a Geonosian Battle Droid Commander with some of those yellow markings. You get a clone commander, which is the clone with the yellow markings on him, a Mace Windu, and a Coleman Trebor minifigure, who is, uh, this is the only set that he ever came in. He was the one that was killed by Jango Fett, for those who have seen episode two. Uh, but aside from the minifigures, honestly, the ATTE itself is all right. Uh, it's not something that I absolutely love. What I really put this one up here is for the minifigures, but the ATTE is okay. Uh, the model seems a little too tight, a little too small, at least compared to the one that I have, which is the Clone Wars version from 2008. I could be completely wrong, as I don't have this one, so I don't know its actual, like, kind of scale. Uh, but what I also don't like about this one is it's very bland. It doesn't have nearly as many uh, red accents on it. Aside from the front cockpit area, the entire thing is basically light gray. There's not a lot of dark gray on it, and there's basically no red anywhere else on the exterior. Uh, overall, the 
uh, ATTE, this version at least, is definitely not one of my favorites. Probably should have put a little bit lower on the list, but the minifigures really bump this one up as I think basically every minifigure in this set is exclusive to it except for maybe one or two, and that's why I put this one at number three. Moving on to number two, a set number 7153. This is the Django Fett Slave 1 from 2002. Retailed for $50, came with 360 pieces, and comes with the final Django Fett minifigure, as well as another young Boba Fett. Uh, this Django Fett minifigure goes for crazy amounts of money, for those uh, who know LEGO Star Wars. And this is yet another Episode 2 set that has been way overdue for a remake. LEGO has been making tons of Boba Fett Slave 1s. I think they're up to 6 now with the 20th anniversary one they released last year. And they have not released another Django Fett Slave 1. It is absolutely frustrating. I absolutely love the color scheme that hat is on Django Fett Slave 1. You have the nice dark blue. You got some greenish accents. The whole just kind of, it's all dark. I just, I really wish LEGO would make another Django Fett Slave 1. I would love to see a UCS version of it. That'd be great. You have Boba Fett's and then you have Django Fett Slave 1. That would be super cool. Um, the minifigures in the set are absolutely great. The design is great. The color scheme is great. There's a lot that is good about this set. It is obviously very outdated coming out in 2002, which is why I definitely think LEGO should make a new version of it. Uh, but overall, just an absolutely amazing set, and that's why I put this one at number two. Moving on to number one for my favorite episode two sets. We have set number 75021. This is the Republic Gunship from 2013. Came with 1,175 pieces for $120. Came with seven minifigures being a clone pilot, a clone captain, which is the one with the red markings there. Two more super battle droids, an Obi-Wan Kenobi, a Padawan Anakin, and then a Geonosian Arena Padme the only set that that version of Padme has ever come out in. And for those who don't know, the Republic gunship is my favorite Clone Wars ship. I absolutely love the design of it, and this one executes it very nicely. Uh, you have the very clean front cockpit area with those two sections, the two turret guns on the interior. There's plenty of interior space to be able to store some clones and your Jedi that are riding around in it. And then the door functionality works very nice to kind of close everything together. You also get some flip fire missiles up at the top. Overall, I absolutely love the gunship. I love the rendition of this one, and the minifigures in it are great as well, and that puts this one at number one on this list. But guys, that'll be all for today's video, so if you did enjoy, don't forget to go down there and hit that like button, and if you want to support the channel, please consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.